Hi, I'm Dr. Hatim Abdul Hussain. I'm a practicing GP and national clinical lead for AI and digital medical workforce at NHS England. Alongside these roles, I'm medical director for Kent Surrey Sussex Academic Health Science Network and an honorary senior lecturer at Keele University. In this video, I will be discussing deploying digital and data literacies in the workforce. This builds on an existing video around capabilities by a friend and colleague, Dr. Alan Davies. In this video, I will aim to Describe how data and digital literacy capability frameworks have been deployed in healthcare. Investigate real-world examples of 21st century skills and capabilities in digital transformation projects. Explore communication methods and approaches to developing competencies in healthcare. So firstly, why is digital and data literacy important? This was looked at in detail in 2019 when Secretary of State for Health and Social Care launched the Topol Review. This report, led by Dr. Eric Topol, Director of the Scripps Institute in the United States of America, painted a vision for a healthcare system which is rational, tailored to the individual, and driven by technologies such as artificial intelligence and genomics. Importantly, the review highlighted the importance of the development of educational resources, which give all healthcare professionals a foundation in principles around data provenance, curation, integration into health and care records, and its safe and appropriate use and storage. On top of this, it was suggested knowledge around ethical factors of data-driven technology and the ability to critically appraise tools in this area were equally as vital in ensuring safe, appropriate patient care. It is recognised that this is not simply exclusive to policy here in the United Kingdom. The Stanford Health Trends Report in 2020 also outlined the emergence of need for skills in these areas and demonstrated that medical students and physicians were actively looking for learning in these domains. In order to deliver the right learning, it's important to understand the needs. There's been a lot of work to develop existing frameworks which help outline capabilities which will drive digital and data literacy. Let's review these. In 2016, Health Education England produced a digital literacy framework with the aim of outlining the capabilities needed for health and care professionals to live, work and thrive in a digital society. The domains covered by these frameworks included information, data and media literacies. This work led to the development of more profession-specific capability frameworks for groups such as allied healthcare professionals, pharmacists and psychological professionals. In addition to these healthcare professional groups, we have seen the emergence of more technical groups in digital, data and technology space. This has led to frameworks designed to develop these professions, in particular clinical informatics and healthcare analysts, by bodies such as the Faculty of Clinical Informatics and the Association of Professional Healthcare Analysts. What has been great about these frameworks so far has been their translation into education and training programs. From undergraduate programs within higher education institutions, to those developed for continuing professional development amongst Royal Colleges, for example. Since 2016, significant advancements have been made in technology, particularly the types of technologies that are used by health and care professionals at the coalface. As a GP, I now engage with a number of technologies when in practice, from e-consultation and triage tools to clinical decision support tools. In secondary care and in social care, we are seeing progress in the development of health and care records. The ability to record and store 
data, and progression in tackling the challenge around data sharing across systems as we move into integrated health and care systems means that opportunities will exist to develop and deliver data-driven technologies. Robotic surgery is emerging as a commonly used method for both routine and complex procedures, with around a third of cancer operations now performed with this technology. Therefore, we can now move to defining more technology-specific capabilities and skills, whilst ensuring that we especially consider human factors, ethical implications, and regulatory learning needs.